Can your symptoms actually be a food intolerance? Then keep watching The Oma Show. Do you have symptoms that just don't seem to go away? I'm not only talking about just digestive symptoms, but any random aches, pains, discomforts, etc. One of the trickiest things to figure out is whether a random symptom could be due to a food intolerance. That's because symptoms can be delayed or ongoing and not even resemble a gastrointestinal symptom at all. In this video, I go over a few of the common symptoms and two very common foods that you may be reacting to but don't even know. Food intolerances or sensitivities can affect you in so many ways and they are a lot more common than most people think. I'm not talking about anaphylaxis or immediate allergic reactions that involve an immune response. Those can be serious and life-threatening. If you have any allergies, you need to steer clear of any traces of foods you are allergic to and speak with your doctor or pharmacist about emergency medication if necessary. What I'm talking about is an intolerance, meaning you do not tolerate a specific food very well and it causes immediate or chronic symptoms anywhere in the body. Symptoms can take hours or even days to show themselves and symptoms can be located just about anywhere in the body. This is what makes them so tricky to identify. Symptoms of food tolerances. These are some common food intolerances that have immediate and terribly painful gastrointestinal symptoms, such as lactose intolerance or celiac disease. These can cause stomach pain, gas, bloating, or diarrhea. Symptoms can start immediately after eating lactose or gluten. On the other hand, other more insidious symptoms may not be linked to foods in an obvious way. Symptoms like chronic muscle or joint pain, sweating or increased heart rate or blood pressure, headaches or migraine, exhaustion after a good night's sleep, autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto or rheumatoid arthritis, rashes or eczema, inability to concentrate or feeling like your brain is foggy, shortness of breath. If your body has trouble digesting specific foods, it can affect your hormones, metabolism, or even cause inflammation and result in any of the symptoms listed above. And these can affect any or all parts of the body, not just your gastrointestinal system. How to prevent these intolerances? The main thing you can do is to figure out which foods or drinks you may be reacting to and stop ingesting them. I know, I know, this sounds so simple and yet it can be so hard. The best way to identify your food drink triggers is to eliminate them. Yup, get rid of those offending foods, drinks, all traces of them for three full weeks and monitor your symptoms. If things get better, then you need to decide whether it's worth it to stop ingesting them or if you want to slowly introduce them back one at a time while still looking out to see if, when, symptoms return. Start here. Here are two of the most common triggers of food intolerances. Lactose. In dairy, eliminate all together or look for a lactose-free label. Try nut or coconut milk instead. Gluten in wheat, rye, and other common grains. Look for a gluten-free label. Try gluten-free grains like rice, quinoa, and gluten-free oats, but stay away from all the processed foods. This is by no means a complete list, but it's a good place to start because lactose intolerance is thought to affect up to 75% of people, while non-celiac gluten sensitivity can affect up to 13% of people. So if you can eliminate all traces of lactose and gluten for three weeks, it can confirm whether either or both of these are a source of your symptoms. 
Yes, dairy and grains are a part of many government recommended food guidelines, but you absolutely can get all of the nutrients you need if you focus on replacing them with nutrient-dense foods. A reliable way to monitor how you feel after eating certain food is to track it. After every meal or snack, write down the foods you ate and any symptoms so you can more easily spot trends. And as mentioned earlier, symptoms may not start immediately following a meal. You may find, for example, that you wake up with a headache the morning after eating bananas. You might be surprised that link you can find if you track your food and symptoms well. When you eliminate something, you need to make sure it's not hiding in other foods or the whole point of eliminating it for a few weeks is lost. Restaurant food, packaged food, and sauces or dressings are notorious for adding ingredients that you would never think are there. You know that sugar hides in almost everything. But did you also know that wheat is often added to processed meats and soy sauce, and lactose can even be found in some medication or supplements? When in doubt, you have to ask the server in a restaurant about hidden ingredients, read labels, and consider cooking from scratch. What if it doesn't work, you might ask. If eliminating these two common food intolerances doesn't work, then you can go one step further to eliminate all dairy, even lactose-free, and all grains, even gluten-free, for three weeks you may need to see a qualified healthcare practitioner for help, and that's okay. I don't want you to continue suffering if you don't need to. I hope this video helped you understanding your food tolerance that you may have. A lot of you ask me on my social media and my YouTube videos about food tolerances and how to figure them out, and that's why I thought this segment was so necessary for me to do. If you found it informative, share it with your family and friends, and press the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Sending you lots of love and health. And don't forget to go on my website and subscribe to my newsletter and become a part of my inner circle. And also download my first ever 53 pages smoothie recipes that will help you transform your health completely. Don't forget. Oh